Now time to open up our discussion with our psychotherapy specialist and life coach uh, specialist and self-development trainer, Sheikh Ramiz Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ramiz. And of course, with our distinguished panel that we have here uh, with us in our studios, who share with us the same goal, trying to be the best that you can be, be a positive change in self-development. And uh, the title, of course, for tonight's episode is Self-Developments and the methods and mechanics of self-evaluation. Sheikh Ramos. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we mentioned in the last episode that uh, a clear function exercise, which was to practically write down uh, things that we liked and we didn't like and things we should change about ourselves. And self-development will always bring some kind of anxiety uh, as regards to trying to find out about yourself. As deeper you go, uh, the fear sets in, as Brother Asha mentioned and bringing up something which is deeply hidden in the depths of one's soul, which they want to keep hidden. Um, <clears throat> Self-development is a process which only begins uh, when a person becomes sincere in their path. We mentioned sincerity and intention as something, I mean, it's, it's a must. It's a condition. Okay, it's a condition. And um, most people, they seem to be uh, intending to change. That's why, they, they, that's why some of them may go to counsellors, life coaches and physio, um, physiotherapists, psychotherapists, and that's their intention. They want to change. Now, if a person is saying, I wish, I wish to change, and they have the intention, obviously that's why they, they verbalise it. They intend it with their heart, they verbalise the intention, yet when you give them the actual opportunity, when you give them the medicine, when you give them the opportunity for it, they make excuses, because the excuses benefit them. And we mentioned also yesterday, that uh, we, uh, the last episode, that laziness isn't a function of a human being that is a general, general generality of that being. It's just that they haven't made themselves goals. We mentioned smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and with timely, with time. And that, so they have no motivation for it. Now, the intention that we, uh, we're talking about is about showing sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, by making a pact with oneself that you wish to make a disciplined and, commi and committed action with the intention. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, 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 in Surah An-Kabut وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَحْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So, but as for those who strive hard, now they want to strive hard, okay, in, in, in our cause, we shall most kindly guide them to the right path. And Allah loves those of people of Ihsan. Now we know Ihsan as in the hadith of Jibail that it's as if you are seeing Allah in front of you and if you can't know that He sees you. It's doing an every act of action with the positive good, the best that you can do. As in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he mentioned that do things with sincerity and with Ihsan. Even to sharpen the knife in such a way that you slaughter the sheep with Ihsan in the best part without any harm, any anxiety. That gave me something metaphoric now, because we sometimes, we slaughter ourselves in that way. Without even trying to do the ihsan, we slaughter ourselves in the way by abandoning ourselves. Sometime, some way along the line, we abandon ourselves. And, it's, and it takes a trainer, a coach, to actually see that. Always the, cho the coach can't go around and saying, yes, you have this problem, you have that problem. But when you do go and see a coach or a a psychotherapist or a counsellor or someone that you need help from, they have to be intuitive enough. Okay? They have to be, uh, they, they need to have specialised acuity to know and sense what it is. Sometimes I, I just walk around uh, 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 at home or I, I, when I go places and I, I go up to a brother and I say, brother, I sense this from you. And most of the time, alhamdulillah, I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. But when I'm right, it makes me feel good that I'm doing my job properly. It's just the way my test is, but my sincerity is, is to help that brother in some, in some kind of way. So, the mechanics and methods that we can use is that we mentioned in the last episode about writing something down uh, that you like about yourself, things you don't like about yourself, and things that you wish to change about yourself. And again, I must re reiterate this, it's important. Things you wish to change about yourselves may not coincide with things you dislike about yourself because some of the things you dislike about yourselves, you, your nafs is not ready to change yet. Mm. This is something else, you've got to take that away from that and, sit and deal with that in, in, specifically in another time. The quicker the better obviously. 
writing things down is different than just um, thinking about it. Some people learn audio visually. Okay, most of us are audio visual because of the, the times that we're living in. TV, radio, stations you hear and you see. Me personally, I tend to learn far quicker by listening. Sometimes I like watching, but I listen. If I listen, close my eyes and listen, I can absorb a lot of things. That's why I hate music. Sometimes when I go places in the music, I walk out. And brother says, why is it bother you? I say, it bothers me. Because it enters my soul, and, and two hours later I find myself humming the tune. I think, where's that come from? Because I absorb it, so I've got to be careful. Sufyan authority, alhamdulillah, he, he learned that way. He learned by audio. audio. When he passed by music, he used to, he used to fit, uh, close his ears and walk away. Now, as regards to uh, other ways of, uh, of changing uh, your behavior, is knowledge. Knowledge. Talib al faridatun ala kulli muslim wa muslima. That uh, seeking knowledge is fard. Now, fard, just like what? Salah. So why are we not seeking in that manner? It's better like uh, Brother Abdullah mentioned yesterday, um, last episode, that it's better to learn a little bit and practice it than know a whole bunch and it's wishy-washy, you just practice it here and there. And that, that makes sense. It makes absolute sense to learn a little bit and practice it. That way, you will not feel the hypocrisy, which will bring you down and make you, make, make you sorrowful. The uh, uh, knowledge is important, because once you learn the knowledge, you will know what you didn't know, and what you need to know. Without knowledge, you will not know that you don't know. Right. If that's not confusing, I'll confuse a bit more. It's not. <laughs> it's not. So it's like, it's, it's only after you know what you thought you knew, which humbles you. Does that make sense? It's mm -hmm. only what you know after you, what you thought you, you knew, which humbles you. And this is arrogance. This is removing the arrogance. Knowledge should remove arrogance. We all know that Allah is Alim, and He's the only one that has the full and pure source of knowledge. And He gives it to whom He wills. The, and it's not worth finding knowledge about something that's not going to benefit you. You need to be specific. You set yourself a smart goal. A goal which is specific. Not generally saying, um, I want to be healthy. That's general. You should say, I'm going to uh, plan to go to the gym at least two hours a week. Okay? That's a specific goal. Uh, you have to measure it. Measuring by how? Uh, the goal is right, I need to lose 10 pounds, I have to keep at it, how much? I want to lose a pound a week. It's measurable. Okay, it's one kilo, two kilos a week, it's measurable. How many times can I go? What times do I need to go? It's measurable. And you've got to keep to the routine. Attainable. It has, again, we're talking realistic. about being realistic, okay? It has to be attainable. Okay, it's achievable. Yes, this goal is, is achievable. And realistic. Okay, it has to be realistic. Realistic enough that your heart will not, uh, you won't lose hope in it. You won't lose heart in it. And obviously, timely. You're going to set yourself a time from now until when you wish to achieve that goal. How many times have we uh, tried to set ourselves a goal and what happened is, before we actually achieve it, what do we do? We give up. We give up, we sabotage it. Not give up, not just give up, we sabotage it. Mm. We want to say We goal. actually sabotage it. The actual goal that we need, or that we want, before it actually gets to the point where we're going to be successful, we actually sabotage it. Not give up, we sabotage it. On purpose. Although you could be very close and maybe you, you, you've done three quarters of the, yeah. uh, yes. of the path. And the closer you are to it, then you sabotage it, the more you're going to feel sorrowful for it the more you're going to you feel, you feel like, I'm a failure. So any How can I be so close? That? What's the explanation for it, that? The same saying? thing we mentioned before in the other episodes. You don't believe you are valuable enough to deserve such success. Now some people, uh, Brother Ash will talk about fear. Fear is something that we need to talk about for, you know, for a long time. It's important because it's the fear that makes you give up. Fear of failure. Not just fear of failure, the fear of success. Because the fear of success of getting that success means more responsibility, more accountability, more reasons that's not valuable enough for you to, to attain. With that beautiful thought, uh, Sheikh uh, Ramaz and uh, dear viewers, allow us to take uh, our break here.